Welcome to News Today with Universal Parks News Today. I'm Tom Corliss. Here now the news for July 31st, 2023. After a few weeks of previews and technical rehearsals, Illumination's VillainCon Minion Blast, as well as Minion Land at Universal Studios Florida, will officially open on August 11th, 2023. Most of Minion Land soft open to the public on June 17th with various themed dining locations and Illumination character meet and greets. And team member previews for VillainCon Minion Blast wrapped up a few weeks ago, and the new attraction has been operating intermittently for technical rehearsals since July 15th. During this period, the ride may or may not operate for the full day, and some elements of the attraction may not be available as our evil scientists work out all the glitches, says the signage. Annual passholder previews are taking place at the beginning of August, just before uh, passholder appreciation days and just before this official August 11th opening. As we just mentioned, uh, Villain Con Minion Blast is currently in a soft opening or technical rehearsal phase. And as with any soft opening, some things may change and some elements may not be operational. Uh, but we have noticed a few things changed already. Uh, now we've spotted an interesting new operational change as team members are handing out toy blasters to kids who cannot hold the actual blaster. Villain Con Minion Blast took over the location of Shrek 4D and is an interactive experience where guests will pick up a handheld blaster and compete to become the newest member of the Vicious Six. These blasters are used by guests to hit targets, battle villains, and collect points throughout the attraction. The blasters have a display screen, two triggers, and react with light, sounds, and haptics as guests shoot at each screen. And with all these features, it's no surprise that the Eliminator X Blaster is a bit on the heavier side. Villain Con Minion Blast is family friendly and does not have a height requirement. That being said, uh, younger guests can ride, but maybe cannot hold this gun as it is quite heavy. That has been an issue. As a solution, uh, team members are now handing out the fake blasters, quote unquote fake blasters to small children that cannot hold the real one. Uh, these are the same Eliminator X toys you could purchase in the park, but Universal has put several markings on them to designate they belong to the attraction. These toy blasters do need to be returned after riding. The toy blaster will be collected from you at the end of the attraction, just like the real ones are. Team members have several of these toys set uh, off to the side to hand out just before the walkway. And if someone in your party wants the fake blaster instead, the team member will give you one uh, at this location you're looking at now. The smallest member in our party was given a toy blaster and was completely happy to quote unquote play along. We noticed that kids were still entertained uh, using a lightweight uh, imitation blaster. Maybe if you're young enough to not realize that, you know, you're not actually doing anything. This is kind of like reminds you when you're a kid and you hand like your younger brother or cousin the Sega Genesis controller, the second one. They're like, oh, you're playing as that guy and they're not really playing. Reminds me a little bit of that. Um, but nonetheless, for younger kids, it doesn't necessarily matter, and this may be safer and more comfortable for them. Um, that being said, from a design perspective, knowing that this would not have a height requirement, I am stunned that no one picked up the gun and was like, this might be a problem. Um, it's interesting. I think it's a design flaw for sure, but uh, no harm, no foul. But we'll see. People may complain um, as time goes on, but they are the, the guns are very, very heavy. The full lineup of haunted houses, scare zones, and a show has been revealed for Halloween Horror Nights 32 at Universal Studios Florida. Of course, there's Stranger Things 4 as you try to escape the curse of Vecna. You'll need your squad to resist Vecna's gruesome curse. And like Eleven, now's your chance to stop him once and for all as you take on the scariest season of Stranger Things yet. There's also The Exorcist Believer and Evil Reawakened. His two missing girls have been found with no memory of what happened to them, uh, but whatever, wherever they went, the ultimate evil has returned with them. Enter the most terrifying scenes from the new Blumhouse film. There's also The Last of Us, where you get to step into the world of the game. You and your squad will encounter the haunting and overgrown world of the video game in a brand new terrifying way. Stay silent if you want to survive a multitude of clickers, hunters, and more. Of course, that's been announced already. Also, Chucky Ultimate Kill Count will be the name of that house. And Chucky's back for even more carnage. The serial killer doll is back uh, for a new gore fest. He's hijacked his own haunted house with all kinds of bloody hijinks, and you and your friends must try to survive his ultimate kill count. Universal Monsters Unmasked will have four Universal Monsters, one new nightmare. Descend into the Paris catacombs where you and your squad will face new horde of monsters, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, the Phantom of the Opera, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, and the Invisible Man. They like to use the word squad a lot. That's a thing in these. Uh, there's also Dr. Oddfellow's Twisted Origins. Uh, your soul is a price he's willing to pay. You won't be able to resist going inside Dr. Oddfellow's menacing menagerie of twisted oddities, uh, but the price for you and your friends is steep, the cost of your souls to feed his immortal power. 
Dueling dragons, choose thy fate. No matter who you choose, you lose. Two warlocks of great power were turned into dragons after trying to take Merlin's spellbook. Now you and your friends are caught in their epic battle, and you must choose a path and a victor. Yeti, campground kills. Yeti or not, here they come. What a tagline. You and your friends are about to venture into the 1950s, into a 1950s campground overrun by huge, menacing yetis who rip apart anyone who gets in their way, and you must flee to the ranger tower to escape. The darkest deal, fame is fleeting, fear is forever. Blues musician Pine Straw Spruce will have to face the music after meeting with the collector and trading his soul for musical glory. You and your squad learn the terrible price of fame. Bleed for the Blood Moon, Blood Moon Dark Offerings. Uh, in a uh, colonial era village, moon worshippers witness a blood moon at their fall festival. They take it as a sign to hunt down any non-followers, including you and your scream squad. As far as scare zones, there will be Dr. Oddfellow's collection of horror. Dr. Oddfellow will lure you into Halloween Horror Nights with a promise of immortality. And as he lifts the veil on all of the horrors to come, you'll soon realize you may not even survive the night. There's Dark Zodiac, as Dr. Oddfellow has entered a dark dimension to harness the power of the Zodiac and live forever. He twists the signs into malevolent beings who uh, foretell your doom. And as his star rises, yours falls. Jungle of Doom Expedition Horror. In the 1920s, Dr. Oddfellow ventured deep into the darkest jungle, performing horrific experiments on nature. And now his monstrous creations are running amok and, you, and are coming after you. Vamp 69, Summer of Blood. At a 60s music fest in a small New York town, I wonder where that could be, you'll jam to popular bands with fellow concert goers until Dr. Oddfellow unleashes vicious vampires on the audience and they're out for your blood. <laughs> Woodstock. Uh, shipyard 32, <laughs> Horrors Unhinged. Enter a 1940s San Francisco shipping yard full of mysterious crates and cages bearing Dr. Oddfellow's symbol. Beware, his nightmarish oddities have now escaped, spreading fear and chaos in their wake. And as well, the return of Nightmare Fuel, but this year it's Revenge Dream. The show that sparked your darkest dreams has reignited. Let your nightmares turn out of control as the pyro and aerial performers fire you up to the beat of metal and electronica. And alongside the full list of Horror Nights houses, scare zones, and shows, Universal Orlando has announced other Horror Nights experiences, including Peacock's Halloween Horror Bar, a comic shop-themed tribute store, and Chucky's Twisted Playground. All Universal Orlando said about Peacock's Halloween Horror Bar so far is that it will feature themed libations with an ominous nightclub vibe, photo opportunities, and more. An exact location wasn't announced, but it could potentially be at Lombard Seafood Grill. The Halloween Tribute Store will be back in the New York section of the park after the 2023 Mardi Gras and summer Jurassic Park Tribute Stores were in the Hollywood section. The Tribute Store will be themed to a mysterious New York City comic book shop where guests can experience the tribute to terror by stepping into the pages of this original terrifying horror comic book. Chucky's Twisted Playground will be a photo illusion experience at Universal's Cabana Bay Beach Resort. It'll have a Chucky photo op. Uh, well, a Chucky photo op has been available at Halloween Horror Nights for the past few years, but um, there'll be something of the sort uh, at Cabana Bay. And for the first time ever, Halloween experiences will be available at all eight Universal Orlando Resort hotels with Universal Monsters Gallery of Legends, lobby photo opportunities, and potentially more. The Red Coconut Club will once again become the Dead Coconut Club with a new theme and menu for this year. Of course, Halloween Horror Nights 32 will run from September 1st through November 4th. This program is brought to you by our official travel agent sponsor, Be Our Guest Vacations. Your dream vacation begins with Be Our Guest and their concierge team of vacation planners. The best part is their concierge services are free. Head on over to BeOurGuestVacations.com slash WDWNT, and the team will design your next epic vacation from the Universal Parks to the Walt Disney World and Disneyland Resorts, the Disney Cruise Line, Virgin Voyages, Royal Caribbean, and more. Universal Orlando Resort has announced a new Taste of Terror dining preview for Horror Nights, available on select nights from August 10th through the 26th, before Horror Nights kicks off in September. Guests can get their first bite of fright with an all-you-care-to-enjoy preview of select Halloween Horror Nights food and drink options in Soundstage 33 at Universal Studios Florida. Taste of Terror dining costs $159.99 per person. Theme park admission for the same day is also required and not included. Taste of Terror dining includes... Uh, you can enjoy an exclusive before events start all you care to enjoy preview of select food and beverage items that will be featured at Horror Nights this year. Uh, tasting size portions, all non-alcoholic beverages included, 
Uh, alcoholic beverages included via a hosted bar. You must be 21 and up with a valid photo ID to drink. There is a souvenir Halloween Horror Nights light up cup for 21 and up. Halloween Horror Nights Coca-Cola Freestyle Cup for everybody. Uh, one digital download of a photo taken at the Taste of Terror as well. One Taste of Terror ticket available to purchase online is valid for one night of the event. It's on the following dates, August 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, 24th, 25th, or 26th. The check-in time will be between 6 and 6.30 p.m. at the end of the street past Race Through New York, starring Jimmy Fallon within Universal Studios Florida. The experience runs from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. The Exorcist, Believer, and Universal Monsters Unmasked Haunted Houses are coming to Halloween Horror Nights 2023 at Universal Studios Hollywood. Inspired by Universal Pictures' terrifying new horror film from Blumhouse and Morgan Creek Entertainment in theaters Friday, October 13th, The Exorcist Believer Haunted House will transport guests to a, a bustling street market in Haiti, where an innocent purchase of a strange folk doll with three eyes leads to the opening of a demonic portal, the awakening of sinister spirits, and the subsequent disappearance of two 12-year-old girls in the U.S. The girls are found three days later with no memory of what happened to them, and after the girls begin to exhibit unsettling behavior, it soon becomes clear that only an exorcism can save them, and everyone who comes in contact with them, including unwitting, uh, unwitting guests, is suddenly at risk of losing their souls. The dark catacombs of Paris house a much darker secret 60 feet beneath the bustling streets as the all-new haunted house Universal Monsters Unmasked takes guests down into the infamous burial grounds where every corner and crevice overflows with millions of skeletal remains and even more sinister secrets. Deep within the catacombs, Universal's most notorious creatures, the Phantom of the Opera, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, Dr. Jekyll and the deranged uh, personality Mr. Hyde, and Dr. Jack Griffin, a.k.a. the Invisible Man, lie in wait as they bide their time and seek vengeance against guests after the opening of the catacombs to the public visitation. These desperate and dangerous fiends have become filled with rage towards guests navigating the twisted tunnels of their underground labyrinth home. Meanwhile, Monsteros, the Monsters of Latin America, an original house has been announced for Hollywood as well. Creative director John Murdy announced the house during a panel at Midsummer Scream. It'll feature three infamous monsters from myths and legends. Concept art of one of the monsters, La Lechuza, uh, was shown. La Lechuza, also known as the Owl Witch, finds her origins in Mexican and Texan folklore as a shape-shifting witch, which often appeared as an owl. A La Lechuza animated figure was built for the house. Another is Talpuchi from the Tiacala region of Mexico. The myth uh, that the team based the monster on is that anyone can be a Talpuchi, uh, which they discover around puberty. To that's not what I discovered. To transform, they must conduct a specific <laughs> ceremony and then transform into one of a series of animals, most commonly a turkey vulture. Uh, they then suck the blood out of their victim's skin. Uh, the house will have two versions, one in a white dress with pale skin who has just transformed and started feeding. Another will be dressed in black with red skin and has been a Talpucci for a long time. And as the new Talpucci transforms, she begins to feed on infants. Uh, her lair was inspired by carnivorous birds' nests, uh, which are adorned with the bones of their victim. The third monster will be Il Sobon, uh, which the Los Llanos region of Colombia and Venezuela believe in. The tale, as Murdy tells it, follows a boy living on a farm fairly well off who falls in love with a woman who, does, who his father doesn't approve of. The father comes in and sees her and murders her. The boy then murders his father. His grandfather comes home and sees what happened. He whips the boy until the flesh falls off his back and pours alcohol on the wounds before settling, uh, setting dogs upon him to rip him to shreds. And as the boy crawls into the woods, he gives him a bag of his father's bones and condemns the boy to carry the bones of his father on his back. The boy becomes El Sabon, a 12-foot tall creature with a distinctive whistle. The legend says if you hear the whistle and it sounds far away, he actually is very close, and vice versa. He preys primarily on womanizers and drunkards. That's perfect for Halloween Horror Nights. When guests enter the Il, uh, Il Sabon's village, uh, they will witness the scene of a Pulcheria massacre. He has killed every single person inside. The house's facade, the Cemetery of the Lost, was inspired by graveyards in Guadalaja and Guada, Guadahuato, Mexico. The in-progress facade can be seen in the photo you're looking at now. It's a forsaken, condemned place that you do not go at night. There will be a grave digger called uh, Muerte, inspired by uh, varieties of the Grim Reaper. 
and guests will meet him out front and his mask will have an articulated jaw. Guests will enter the crypt. The interior decorations were inspired by the Oaxan uh, tomb paintings. Uh, the crypt then serves as a sort of portal to the stories of each creature. When you exit the house, you'll enter the El Terra de los uh, Muamuas uh, scare zone. Inspired, I'm sure I'm butchering these folks at home. Be sure to uh, correct me in the comments. Uh, inspired by the 1950s Mexican horror films about Aztec mummies, uh, uh, which that's the momias, the, the, I guess is the Mexican word for mummy. Uh, the HHN crew created fictional movies to base the zone around. Do you want to save money on your Universal Orlando Resort tickets? Well, our sponsors, Unlock Magic, are now selling tickets uh, to all Universal parks for up to 12% less than you'll see at the gates. So if you want the cheapest Universal tickets in town, head to Unlock Magic and use code WWNT to get a free month. The link is below in our description if you're looking to save money on your next Universal vacation. The next Universal Orlando Resort theme park, Epic Universe, is on track to open in the summer of 2025. And a lot of details on this brand new theme park are still unannounced, but there's a lot happening around the construction site. And aerial photographer BioReconstruct has been providing construction updates on Twitter. And we've been collecting the latest round of photos to share with you. So buckle in. We've got a lot to talk about. Several concrete columns are in half circles at the entrance of the park. Some of the columns have already been connected with walls, and to the right in the photo you're looking at now are two domes, part of a larger structure. The photo you're looking at now labels approximately where elements of the entrance will be. Admission sales, security and admission, uh, an oval entrance structure, courtyard, and a signature gateway are all part of it. Crews are preparing to pour concrete for a building near the admission sales locations. A building on the west side of the entrance is partially constructed. Some of it is still steel framework in need of walls and roofing. The central corridor of Epic Universe will have several water features and circular structures. The park will also have celestial theming. It is Epic Universe, after all. This photo shows more of the celestial corridor and celestial park. The dual racing coaster has two tracks, yellow and orange. They cross over and under each other in an offshoot of the park center. In the photo you're looking at now, Bio points out theming work underway by the coaster, plus a small dome recently constructed near a, next to a larger dome, rumored to be a water-based carousel. Here's a closer look at the new elements at the front of the dual racing coaster. Three curved beams of steel stretch from the roof uh, of the building to a support on the ground, and a construction worker sits atop the support. Work has begun on installing a roof over the coaster's launch building. A curved frame is now over the load area, uh, but paneling hasn't been installed. Nearby, a boom crane is hoisting two brown towers into place. These are part of the How to Train Your Dragon land uh, for an aerial spinning ride. Here's another look at the rumored carousel. There's one large dome and one smaller dome, and as crews finish installing the smaller dome's frame, temporary supports are still being used. The flat sections of concrete next to the domes are the beginnings of the water features floor. The Epic Universe in Park Hotel is already a few stories tall as well. The hotel is curved along the edge of the park at the far end from the main entrance. Directly behind the hotel in front of the lake is a parking structure. Elements of the park line up with the center of the hotel for a cohesive look. The How to Train Your Dragon Land is rumored to officially be named the Isle of Burke. At the entrance are two statues that also appear in the How to Train Your Dragon films, hence why we know that this is definitely the theme of the land. There's a Viking statue on the left and a dragon statue on the right, both painted in blue and gold. Viking boats are behind them with rocks surrounding. The statues and boats will eventually be surrounded by water. In the films, these statues are a gateway for ships. In this photo, we see the How to Train Your Dragon coaster going beneath the entrance bridge and over the future lake. The building near the land's entrance has a steel tower atop it and three peaked grooves. Themed rooftops have been installed at the station for the How to Train Your Dragon coaster. The planks appear misaligned and rough, and there are two chimneys. A restaurant in the land will be inspired by the Great Hall in the film. It's at number one in the photo you're looking at now. Number two is the roller coaster station and the first launch. Three is the coaster service bay. Four is a service building. And five is a power and water plant. Here are the spinning ride towers again. One is installed at number one, while another is staged next to its concrete foundation at number two. Number four is the loading platform for a boat ride. The large building is a theater for a show likely similar to the one that already exists at Universal Studios Beijing, which is called Untrainable. It has rave reviews. Roofing has been installed over the theater seating inside, and the boat ride will move through a section of the bay beyond a bridge. The second launch of the How to Train Your Dragon coaster is in the center of the photo you're looking at now. 
Off-site are two more hotels. One building seems complete. The oval shape of a pool is already visible, and a road runs between the two hotels. Back in the park, the only land that has been announced so far is Super Nintendo World. The land already exists at Universal Studios Japan and Universal Studios Hollywood. The Florida version will open with both attractions from Japan, as well as the Donkey Kong expansion, which is already under construction in Japan. Guests enter through Peach's Castle, and paving of the walkway past the castle is already complete. A grand staircase descends from the courtyard in front of Peach's Castle, and unlike Universal Studios Japan and Hollywood, guests will enter the land from the top via an escalator instead of from the bottom. Actually, in Japan, you enter from the top. There's just no escalator. It's a very, very long ramp, essentially, that goes uh, all the way up the side of the Jaws ride. It's weird. It's super weird. The yellow-orange tracks in these photos is for Yoshi's Adventure and Omnimover ride. The arrow points uh, at the entrance to the other attraction, Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge, also known as Koopa's Challenge in Japan. A building directly outside of the land is believed to be a Nintendo-themed cafe and store. Mushroom Kingdom is at the front of the land, while the Donkey Kong section is at the back. And here is the Donkey Kong roller coaster. It uses a sideways track running alongside fake tracks, uh, which will be used to make it look like cars are jumping over empty sections of track. A ride envelope used to test clearance is already being used, and it's visible at number two in this photo. And like much of Epic Universe, water flows around this coaster. Florida's third Wizarding World of Harry Potter will be inspired by the Paris version of Diagon Alley, seen in Fantastic Beasts, The Crime of Grindelwald, Place Cachet. The land has some of the tallest structures, with facades mostly blocked by scaffolding. Different types of roofing are visible uh, at the edges of the buildings, and fake windows line the buildings as well. A courtyard is through one building to the right. The land has thin streets, and like the other Wizarding Worlds, will use perspective to make it seem as if there are even more buildings to behold. The show building will contain two attractions. One is a show, while the other will transport guests from Paris to the London Ministry of Magic. The last land rumored for Epic Universe is Dark Universe, inspired by Universal Monsters. The entrance portal to Dark Universe resembles a giant tree with rocks around it. Guests will purportedly walk through an old village to a mansion. A barn-like structure has dark brown wood walls and a light blue roof. It's the launch area of a roller coaster believed to be a spinning coaster. Dark Universe will also have a restaurant. Stone walls have been installed on the outside of it. The main attraction within the mansion will reportedly be a robotic arm ride using KUKA arm technology like Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey at Islands of Adventure. Pinch rail track is staged in the nearby team member parking lot. The mansion is covered in scaffolding, but the distinct shape is showing through. Of course, Epic Universe coming in 2025. We will continue to cover construction, uh, mostly thanks to BioReconstruct. Thank you, Bio. You can support the entire team behind this show by joining the WWNT Inner Globe Society at patreon.com slash WDWNT. Get access to exclusive content, discounted show and event tickets, and more. Special shout out to you, all of our WIGS members who make the show happen every week. For more information on these stories and more, head on over to universalparksnewstoday.com. If you're enjoying the show, be sure to like this video, subscribe to Universal Parks News Today on YouTube for more great content, and click the bell for notifications. Also, make sure to hit select all notifications so you never miss an episode of the show. For UPNT, this is Tom Corliss saying, the future is whatever you make it, so make it a good one. From WDWNT-TV, this is Park Center. Join us each week for news and discussion topics from the Disney and Universal theme parks around the world. We cover the stories in a quick, concise, and fun format, and then our panel breaks down and debates some of the biggest issues and what they mean for us, the Parks fans. From the latest announcements to openings and delays to scandals and snacks and merchandise and more, we'll cover it all in 90 minutes. Join us live every Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern on YouTube at WDWNT-TV or watch episodes on demand anytime. You can also subscribe to the audio version of the show on your favorite podcast app.